Oh, hey, I've gotten some requests to do Weir's parts in the song playing in the band. Before I get started, I should say, though, that uh, I'm going to be making use of, and you definitely should check out the, the tab that Jay Darks has at jdarks.com. He's got the full tab for Jerry's parts and some of Bobby's as well at his website. Uh, I'm going to be making use of that, and you should definitely check it out, too. Let me run through the different parts of Bobby uh, that he does, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about some of the, the interesting bits that make this song uh, an interesting one. All right, so we're going to start off with a D sus 2. So the notes in that are going to be D and E and an A. That's going to be the fifth. The D, the E is the 2, and the 5 is going to be the A. First move is going to involve pulling down from that D to a C sharp. Then we're going to hit the C. That's what's going to be partly interesting. C sharp and a C. Then we're going to come back up to the C sharp. All right, so. to the verses and the chorus. And here the hardest part is just going to be the rhythm. Uh, people talk about this song is in 10-4. Uh, just trying to get Bobby's rhythm is something that might take a little, a little work, especially when it comes to singing on top of it. Now coming out of the verses, we're going to have this uh, most recognizable riff. Start on the G, up to the A, C. Think about what we were talking about before, the C versus C sharp. Now the C shows up. Bobby is doing it there, the G, the A, the C, ending on the D. Garcia is doubling him, but he's doing it up, at least starting, a minor third above. On the E, to the F sharp, G, F sharp, E, D. to what we'll call the bridge. Now for the bridge we're going to have the chords A, E, A, slide it down to the first fret, that A, and then move it back up, G, D, A, then we're going to repeat it, then we're going to come back and then we're going to do this little riff that I'll come back and I'll explain how that works, and which will end with our going to B minor, minor, G minor, that we're going to play this way, that I'll explain. Alright, so here we go. Thank you. 
to our D5. Alright, so what was going on there in that little riff was we have on the A. F sharp to A. G. F sharp. E. And on the D. But that D we're going to catch with the B minor. G played there. B minor. And then G minor. Here's our G. That will be our G minor form. Finish it off there. One other way to think about it is B flat and G minor are the relative minor and major of each other. You can always get from the major to the corresponding minor by just sort of grabbing that D7 shape there. So we've got it at the 7th and the 8th fret. Now we're going to enter into the jam. I'm going to go through the theory in a little bit, but first let me just say the sort of introduction to what's going to be. Back to that main riff. Here's where we've got a chance for something interesting that's going to happen. Jerry's been doing riffs that are making use of the F sharp. the riffs that Bobby does often beginning the jam will start off making use of that F sharp. F sharp to the F and as soon as that happens then we've shifted into the Dorian mode. And we're into recognizable territory. So let me now explain a little bit about what that means and then we'll come back, play a little bit with some of the chords that Bobby makes use of and then uh, come back and add a little bit of Jerry's parts to it. Okay, now we enter uh, the long jam section, which of course is going to be different every time we play. This is going to be a, a challenge, uh, especially for the rhythm player, to find chords that are going to fill that long space. Jerry's going to be soloing in the D Dorian mode. So let's talk about that and then we'll talk about the chords that we can make use of to fit with that. All right, so the D Dorian takes the D major scale modifies it in two ways. It takes the third note, D, E, F sharp, and it flattens it to an F, and it takes the seventh note, C sharp, and flattens it to a C. So what we end up with are the notes D, E, F, G, A, a little bit with that I think you can hear some of what's uh, what you're gonna get from Garcia the notes in that D Dorian are the same notes as are found in the C major scale so if you want to get started by thinking about the C major scale and then think about focusing on the D note that's a way to start the relationship again is D Dorian has the same notes as the C major it's always nice to know what the corresponding major is when you've got a mode like the D Dorian mode. The way you do it is, you remember the order of modes. Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, 
Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian. Dorian is second, so you ask yourself, what major scale would have D as the second note in it? Because D is the second. And the answer is C. C has the D note as its second. So the notes, again, in the C major scale are the same ones that we've got. I was playing it up at the 10th fret, but you can play around with it all over the neck. In particular, it's helpful to recognize that if we've got the same notes in the C major scale as in the D Dorian mode, that means we've got the same notes that are in the A minor scale, because the A minor scale is the corresponding minor to the C. So lots of people know what the A minor scale looks like. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. That's going to give us a good place to start when we start thinking about the chords. All right, now, one of the chords that Bobby's going to make heavy use of is the D sus2 that we started the song with. Here's a way to fret it. Take your uh, second finger and grab that F, then we've got our D minor. Something else you can do is grab the G note here. Now again, the notes in the D Sus2 are D, E, and A. There are other places you can play that, such as up here. Here's our E, there's our low D. E, A, D. Here's our D minor. Here's our D sus2 up again at the 12th fret. Slightly different ordering of the notes, we have the A sus4, which are the same notes as in the D sus2. So we've got A, E, and A here. A, E, and then the D. Or if you want, you can get the D here. pretty limited palette to work with, so how else can we add to it? Well, here thinking modally is going to help. We recognize that the D Dorian mode has the same notes in it as the C major. So you think to yourself, well, if it's C major, all the notes in it are natural. If you think about which chords are going to be major chords, if we have the C major scale, we know from our 1, 4, 5 that C, F, and G are going to be the major chords in there. Now, how can we make use of that? If those are the major, everything else is going to be minor, or at least one of them is going to be a diminished. But the important part is even diminished chords have a flattened third. So notice what we've got here. Here's our A, here's our C, that's a minor third. Here's our B, here's our D, that's a minor third. As in A minor, B minor, it's our C and a B, that's major. Here we've got our D. Anyone notice that? Here's our F again. Minor. And in fact, Bobby's going to make use of this often. If you listen to the studio version, you can hear this nice little run that he makes, and it's one that he does in live versions too. Dorian scale, and they're going to add to the repertoire that we can use when we're facing, as a rhythm player, a long jam, where we don't want to be just playing D sus2 all the time.